uh, hi everyone uh, as stack runtime maintainers we are uh, used to not having like a huge turnout so this time around we got more speakers you know just to keep ourselves company <laughs> in case we, <laughs> we feel lonely so over to you alexander all right let's let's start uh, welcome uh, i know it's long day we are like last in a row of sessions for today uh, and we would like to talk about what agron time so uh, like what what we're very interesting and very wide uh, range of things what we are doing. Uh, and on stage we have like myself, Alexander Kanievsky, Rajas, Ricardo, and uh, Daniel. All of us are part of Tagrant Time, but we are doing different things and we are going to speak about uh, parts which we are mostly involved on. Very briefly, overview few things from our working groups and when how to get involved with all of those let's start with stack runtime uh, you probably know like how the scope of a six in kubernetes are done you have probably seen some of the tags in cncf which also scope it to particular subject for us we are from one hand we are standard tag so like we have like slack we have regular meetings we have like uh, um, chairs we have technical leads all the standard what is different for us is the scope of the projects what we are covering and what you can see from the statement is like it says the whole area the whole range of the workloads how to run and get it run on not only on kubernetes but on cncf stacks just to glance what it can be about like you see like different scale of projects you can see something like monstros like kubernetes you can see something small like cryo container d you can see very different from a perspective like uh, confidential containers you can see something like cubage acre and so on all of this can be summarized in few particular areas what we are looking at like general orchestration like kubernetes vms and runtimes so again like cryo container d kata and similar edge like all, all the projects related to it um, something what is happening on your host like specialized os images like Flatcar, talas many other projects which is specific to cloud providers or different companies which is also part of the cncf landscape uh, ai machine learning workloads we all have uh, our interest in those so far it's like some working groups but looking at the hype what we currently have around all of those maybe we will soon see the tag ai or something like that and with that huge scope you can understand what like we have a working groups which are concentrated on specifics in each of those areas so a little bit about some, some of the project presentations that we've had in the tag a, a big one <laughs> uh, so we have a variety of different uh, tools and projects uh, so in the terms of but containers, we've had things like Cryo, Container D present, uh, workloads, you had things like uh, uh, the Cubedge graduation, Open Tofu, which is an open source project that is a fork of uh, Terraform, HashiCorp Terraform. Uh, we also have uh, Kubernetes related uh, projects like Keda for cluster auto scaling, uh, Kubernetes auto scaling. We had things like uh, uh, Stellar for Kubernetes management. Uh, Cube Clipper, also Kubernetes management. So th these are some of the examples. Uh, operating systems or special operating system, like uh, Alex was uh, mentioning. Uh, examples are Flatcar or Kairos. And finally, uh, the interesting topic uh, that is very relevant now that a lot of people are talking about, AI-related type of projects like Kubray that helps you uh, scale AI type of workloads, uh, training workloads. Uh, in case GPT that allows you to monitor your uh, Kubernetes clusters using natural language uh, connected to an LLM. Uh, so one example project that presented is Kubraid, uh, and this is again an interesting project in the AI space. Uh, and it's uh, uh, 
composed of different uh, parts. So you have a, a core, you have a, a ray cluster, a ray job, uh, and that's the, the main part of the project. And, and there's also some community managed uh, optional components that are external, like the Kubray API server, the Kubray CLI, and the Python client. Another um, project that is part of, um, of uh, Tech Runtime is uh, Flatcar, as mentioned before. Uh, it's a container optimized Linux, uh, which means it's got a minimal distribute, uh, it's a minimal uh, operating system for distributing containers. It's got a minimal surface uh, attack, uh, it's immutable. Um, it runs uh, AB partitioning, uh, which means uh, you can run updates also automatically. And uh, you can um, um, declare your configuration with ignition file when, uh, before uh, during provisioning. So, but what I want to show about that is um, not focused on Flatcar, but how uh, it comes to the bigger picture with other CNCF projects and other um, working groups. So, uh, Flatcar um, contributed to, to CAPI. Um, so currently how uh, you create an image in Cappy, you kind of have uh, complexity around there because um, you need to create an image uh, that have like three dimensions of complexities like of the um, Kubernetes version that you want to run, the cloud provider that you want to run on, and the OS image. So all of them needs like all of this like three parameters creates a specific image that you need to maintain. and. Uh, when you update, you must to replace the node itself. So it's kind of painful. Um, therefore, we started to work on uh, systemd CSX. And what's interesting about that is that it really simplifies things. So instead of having a matrix of all of these like, um, different things working together, you got a linear uh, um, complexity. Because what you take, you take the basic uh, OS from the cloud provider, and on the top of that, adds the bits that are interesting for you, um, for like for the Kubernetes version or so on. So you can also create updates uh, that are don't require the, to uh, create a new node, but you can create also in-place updates. So uh, it's basically like uh, Simlink for uh, slash USR or slash opt. Uh, that could be used. Now, it works well on Flatcar because it's a mutable uh, uh, operating system. And um, it requires that slash USR would be read-only. Now, we collaborated upstream, and now systemd CSX got a feature that uh, allows also to, to um, operating system that don't have only read-only slash USR partition uh, also to enjoy this uh, functionality. So that's created an interesting story, also upstream with CAPI and, um, and SystemD. So and another story that comes out of that after, with SystemD CX is a collaboration with WASM. So um, there is a link here to a library of uh, different baked images of, uh, of SystemD. So basically in the declaration file that I uh, mentioned before, you can kind of point to a link um, to pull the image from and basically run whatever WASM distribution you are interested in. So just simplify a bit things. Thank you. So a little bit about our, our working groups. Okay, so um, we recently created the, the Cloud Native AI working group, so we're very excited about this. Uh, this is uh, happening everywhere in terms of AI. That's the conversation. Uh, generative AI made it big uh, uh, last year with the release of ChatGPT. So one of the things that we're very excited about is that we created the uh, why, uh, Cloud Native AI white paper. This is our first deliverable, but we're thinking about doing many more things so check it out, it's how it was uh, published two days ago. If you have any feedback, you send us a Slack message or, or any uh, way we can help, but just, just let us know. So 
Another thing that we're working on is the cloud native AI landscape. Uh, so as you may be aware, there's a big landscape in the cloud native ecosystem. And I think it, sometimes it's hard to read. So what we're trying to do is uh, just uh, constrain that landscape into AI type of work, uh, workloads in, in the cloud native ecosystem to make it easier for people to find the different projects and to get started. Uh, so that's something that it's at the top of our minds. Uh, additionally, we have a, a repository where we're thinking about to, uh, a place to store artifacts or things that the, the community is working on. Uh, examples of that are, you know, little uh, tutorials or, or things like uh, like a workshop or that, that can be created for people to learn uh, AI in, a, in an easy way. For example, the full lifecycle uh, management of AI that includes training and serving machine learning models. And another thing we're thinking about is uh, starting a reference implementation to make it easy for people to understand uh, AI across the board, and including the machine learning lifecycle. So finally, we are thinking about outreaching to open source projects related to the cloud native uh, AI ecosystem. And these include the AI specific projects that are maybe part of the Linux Foundation data in AI. So what we're trying to do is create that collaboration across uh, both foundations and so that we can work together and people can understand each other from both sides. And when that, I, I think about the problem in organizations when you have data scientists on one side and on the other side of the organization, you have developers or DevOps engineers or operations engineers, and they don't quite understand each other. So the idea here is to bridge that gap and make it better and more efficient in the future. In the future. So a little bit on, on another working group that we have is the WASM working group. Uh, Danielle already alluded to some WASM features in Flatcar, but they're working on very exciting things. Uh, uh, they've had presentations from WASIVert that allows you to virtualize comp WASM components. Uh, one of the big things that they're working on is OCI support for WASM modules. Uh, you may have, may have heard that uh, the WASM ecosystem has created uh, uh, a model to share uh, components or WASM components uh, between uh, different applications is called the, WAS the WASM component model. And OCI is a big part of that because that means that these components can actually be stored in artifact stores that are OCI compliant, just like containers. And they're working on other things like WASM, the WASM observability standard and the, the WASM cloud interface, and that includes WASM, WASM modules that allow uh, users to talk to a uh, cloud provider like an S3 blob storage or uh, a way to talk to a messaging application or, or a way to set up an HTTP service. So there's another working group. It's an uh, operating system, special purpose operating system working group. Um, so, so far, um, we started it a couple of months ago. And uh, as you can see, uh, we covered anyone interested uh, to show what they're doing. So like first uh, presentations is uh, any uh, operating system that's kind of interested to, to be part of the group, kind of joined and just demoed. There are links there to all the different um, meetings. Um, if anyone in the crowd wants to join, always welcome. We are open for new attendance. Um, and I uh, just want to share what we do and how to get involved. So there are two QR codes. Uh, the small one is for a panel tomorrow. So in case you are still here, because it's the end of the day, I must say, <laughs> and uh, if you are interested to join, so there is a schedule uh, for um, just a meeting talking about, um, well, whatever you want to talk about, like if there are any um, different whatever standards that were interesting, issues that we run through, um, what we consider is a special operating OS for containers, and so on. Um, and the other uh, QR code uh, is uh, just like to, to get to in contact, like um, about the meeting and so on. So we're kind of at a starting point, so if you get, want to get involved, uh, it's a good time. Mm. 
So a little bit on, uh, about this other working group that we have, the IoT Edge working group. Uh, so the scope of the IoT Edge working group includes uh, a lot of cloud native projects. Uh, you may, may have heard of them, uh, Cube Edge, uh, OpenYerk, K3S. Uh, it's a very relevant cloud native space uh, where you run uh, workloads in a constrained environment and there's different requirements for this constrained environments like smaller modules, a uh, uh, smaller f uh, footprint, or you have things like um, uh, lower energy consumption requirements. Uh, one of the example uh, projects that, that are part of the ecosystem, or that is part of the ecosystem is Acri, that helps you uh, discover devices automatically at the edge. So you plug a device and it's automatically discovered, and then you remove that device, and that device is automatically removed. Uh, so this working group is also working on the similarities and the differences between what it is cloud native and edge native. So with cloud native, so a lot of these uh, applications are, are based on uh, observability at a, at a higher level and, and then also managed in, 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 a, in a centralized location. Whereas in edge native applications, you have considerations for uh, being in that constrained environment, and, and for example, uh, you cannot scale uh, that much as much as, as in a centralized uh, location. Your security is different too because uh, maybe your uh, Kubernetes or K3S cluster is located in a, in a small box at the edge or maybe at, at a toll booth or, or, or some place where there's a camera and, and there's a little box, so security considerations are, are you, you need to have some sort of log there or some sort of encryption to the access to that mechanism. So, what, what we're seeing here is like the differences between cloud native and, and edge native, and, and, and they're helping out with this. And another uh, working group is the Batch System Initiative uh, working group, and this, actually, this focuses on, on large-scale batch workloads. They're very relevant to AI now, especially for training type of workloads. Uh, so they created a landscape for uh, these type of projects. So you have projects like Volcano, which you mentioned before. We have projects like um, uh, Carmada is another one, or Armada. There's one called Armada, and there's an another one called Carmada. They're both uh, related to orchestrating uh, batch workloads. And they've also uh, uh, created a, a white paper on batch scheduling tools. Uh, so they look at uh, the different features and, and correct characteristics ab ab about this type of uh, uh, tools and how they can be used for uh, running this type of workloads more efficiently. Oops. All right, so the next one is the one which I am passionate about, so a container orchestrated devices working group. It's all linked to what was previously said, like nowadays we have a difference in the workload, so most of them uh, seem to be like a new one is machine learning and AI. And obviously, all of those require accelerators and access to, to those kind of devices. This working group is also about collaboration, but a bit collaboration, a bit different one between the companies, between the hardware vendors on how to get the best user experience for utilizing accelerators and actually not only accelerators, but overall hardware in the CNCF ecosystem. We are not very good on producing white papers. However, we are producing the specs uh, and libraries. Um, we were first uh, repository which was uh, created under the new organization in CNCF, CNCF Tags. And thanks for our lessons who, who helped us to, to do it. Uh, we're trying to keep all the information there. Um, we have several like fellow travelers. Uh, you might see uh, some talks here or on this KubeCon, and maybe you can watch later in the recordings, like search about with hardware, like CPU, uh, DRA, GPUs, more or less it all converge to what we are doing in the background. We have like few updates, the new release of our spec is coming out. We are constantly trying to fix uh, like more corner cases or more um, advanced usage scenarios like username spaces where like you are not running containers as root to access your accelerators and so on. So 
soon it, it will be published. Where, like where we are working, where our things are used. The short answer, everywhere. Let's start with uh, non-Kubernetes use cases. So if you are on Red Hat systems with Pod1, if you're on our systems with Docker, uh, if you are in HPC world, uh, in OCI mode, all of those things, we work tirelessly to, to get it enabled. What, like, you can ask, I want GPU zero. And when in background it's happening, what GPU zero is actually about. In Kubernetes, one thing what you need to know is what we think what we are doing is a basis of DRA. DRA, well, we have this DRA con nowadays. With CDI, we think what we are producing is a things what enable it um, from a like lower layer of a stack. We also did this implementation for device plugins. So like even older accelerated devices can utilize this uh, new approach of communicating what accelerator is about. And we have several fellow travelers, what I may, uh, what I already mentioned. We have NRI in container runtimes, both cryo and container D. Uh, those are helping to tune your native resources like CPU and memory to get the best out of uh, rest of our system like accelerators and our peripherals. We are working on some caps. Have a look. We will, you will have a links uh, later on. Please join if you have some performance or like hardware optimization things what you might be interested to get in. All right. Uh, so, so we've looked at uh, what tag runtime's up to. Uh, what's happening with all of the working groups. So now let's try to look at how you can get involved um, in, in contributing to tech on time. Uh, one, one of the aspects that we would like you know, more contributions from is to reach out to other projects. Uh, reaching out to other projects looks like something along the, some, something along the lines of a of, of opening an issue or starting a discussion at an open source project's uh, GitHub repository, which basically tells them that, hey, we are from Tag Runtime. We would like you all to present at uh, our Tag Runtime meetings. And what these presentations look like are basically an update or an overview of what the project is up to, how is it relevant to cloud native uh, ecosystem. And these projects are mostly uh, focus towards the runtime bits uh, on how to run workloads on cloud native infrastructure uh, and whether they are aligned to things like edge or things like artificial intelligence, things like container devices, WASM, so on and so forth, right? Uh, this also helps us uh, see whether we can invite those projects to be part of CNCF, of the CNCF landscape. And this, is, this also applies to existing projects in CNCF and help them move uh, through the CNCF uh, uh, landscape. So these are some of the uh, avenues. Uh, these are some of the uh, avenues that you can try to reach out projects to. One easy trick is to go to landscape.cncf.io, figure out projects which are not part of CNCF but listed on the landscape, and then try reaching out to them mostly from, say, container registries, orchestration, provisioning, things like that. Um, the other aspect is to uh, interact with end users. So most of the contributions in Tag Runtime are maintainer-specific right now, but a gap exists wherein we, we are looking forward to talk more and more to the end users. Uh, all of the, for example, the working group AI white paper that got out, that had a lot of maintainers co-authoring that group, uh, white paper. And we, we would like more uh, contributions from end users. So this is why if you can help us uh, you know, start conversations with end users, see what's working out for them, what's not working out from, for them, that's, that's like a great uh, another avenue. So technical, uh, so the, the end user tab is, is a way you can get uh, engaged with end users and uh, try to see how we can you know, build synergies between the tab as well as um, the tag runtime aspect, right? 
Moving on, uh, staffing a booth at uh, staffing tag runtime booth at uh, KubeCon. So thanks to Steven, Steven's over here in the crowd. Uh, we have a tag runtime booth. Uh, uh, we, we started this from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Chicago last year. And now here in Paris, we have another uh, part-time booth. So staffing the booth, being there, like maybe presenting an update from a working group or like just helping out with, you know, getting people introduced to tag runtime, that'd be like a great value add, value add right? So that's another uh, avenue. Uh, the other aspect is annual sandbox review. So uh, to give you some context around this, earlier, uh, earlier uh, last year, a technical oversight committee in CNCF came up with this uh, proposal to help tags uh, review uh, annual sandbox reports. So these are the reports presented by sandbox projects on what the project has been up to, what their roadmap looks like, you know, what the adoption has been, so on and so, so forth. So as a tag member, we had to give them recommendations based on whether we want the project to continue as part of CNCF la uh, sandbox landscape, whether the project is ready to move from sandbox to incubating stage, or whether the project has concerns and how we can re remediate these uh, concerns, right? So we had to work with uh, the TOC liaisons that were uh, part of uh, tag runtime. As, as part of this, we got to know a lot of uh, projects that are out there in the landscape. Tag Runtime had most of the projects. Uh, clearly, we couldn't meet the deadline of reviewing all of the projects. Uh, we got help from, say, other tags as well. So that was great. But this was, this was a great avenue to, like, you know, for the uh, community to come along and collaborate on all of these things. Uh, from, from now on, uh, after, after this exercise, we did a retro. We figured out that this was a very uh, resource intensive, bandwidth intensive exercise, and we try to automate all of these reviews. But I just wanted to call out all of the contributions that went out through this. So watch out for uh, such avenues which may come up later on, and you can help you know help us part help us be part of this or drive these efforts. Speaking of technical oversight committee, uh, a lot of contributions are about helping uh, the technical oversight committee in. Uh, CNCF. So, in, oh, so to give some more context, tags are supposed to provide updates to the TOC, and as part of tag, uh, and as part of the process, these updates have moved from like sync meetings to async updates. So, at tag runtime, what we've done is like collated a document with all of the updates that go out every month. So, if you can help us bubble up these updates, right? So, all of the tag leads bubble up updates for the month and then send it out to TOC. These updates may include what projects have contributed to TAG in that month, what the working groups are up to, whether the TAG is working on something else or some white paper, any of the contributions that are forthcoming, whether we need help in any particular area, so on and so forth. So just helping bubble this up, bubble up the information and sending across, that can be like a huge value add as well. Recommendations to see a TOC, pro uh, to TOC about project moving levels is another great one. So. Uh, in the CNCF ecosystem, the tags uh, operate as reviewers while the TOC operates as an approver to a project, kind of an equivalent. Uh, here's an example where we got pinged from TOC on asking a recommendation for the coordinator project. Uh, this basically means that we get to have our say in terms of what projects get into CNCF, what projects uh, transition through the levels of CNCF, and so on and so forth. So if you want to ha have a say in contributing towards the project moving levels, this is a great avenue as well. The other aspect is to start attending TAG Runtime meetings. <laughs> uh, but TAG Runtime meeting is not just yet another meeting. It's the coolest meeting out there. This is the one where all the project maintainers which are in the purview of runtime come and present their project. You get to interact with the maintainers, ask meaningful questions, and get involved with the project as well. Uh, so we, we meet on first and third Thursday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific. He's, uh, you, you, know, you can scan the QR code and like, you know, navigate from there. Uh, we've talked about working groups, so you can get involved in any of the working groups. That's a great avenue as well. Um, another bit is the contributor ladder for tag runtime. So 
your contributions to tag runtime may roughly look like this. You join the tag, you are start attending meetings, you start reaching out to projects. Maybe you start contributing to white papers, you get involved into uh, you know, some of the tag deliverables. Um, then you help with leading the initiatives and eventually you become a lead, maybe a co-chair or a tech lead, so on and so forth. So we, we are trying to, you, your journey may not exactly look like this, but it may be some, an overall summary of what's happening over here. So this is an effort that we're trying to drive across uh, all the other tags as well. So to get up, uh, to get to a contributor ladder, which is like cross tags and very much not specific to one, but just wanted to call that out as well. Um, another role that's coming up is a tag ambassador. So these are CNCF ambassadors who can get involved with tags as well. So if you are more interested in this, like feel free to chime in on this issue. Uh, this is what all of us look like to see all of you all attend a tag runtime maintainer session at KubeCon uh, and just people attending our meeting. So thank you for making it to this session. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we hope to see some of at all of y'all, but at least some of y'all at our tag runtime meetings and helping us out in the tag as well. So thank you one and all. We're open for questions now. Yeah, uh, thanks again for the talk. I, I learned a lot. Um, I, I was just curious about the project outreach part. Uh, I got the impression that anyone who's sort of starting to get involved can help out with that effort, but I'm curious about what the process of doing so might look like. Uh, so do we reach out on the Tag Runtime channel saying that here is an XYZ project that I feel like could be interesting if presented at Tag Runtime and if there's like a template-ish thing? Uh, what does the process look like in general? Uh, yeah, so the question, the question was, uh, what, what's the process for uh, project outreach within the tags? Uh, it's it's kind of pretty wide open. Uh, uh, one of the things I do, is I scout the GitHub repositories for projects. I connect with other community members. I, I look at newsletters or things that are out there and, and find uh, the place where I can contact that project. But, Typically, that's the GitHub repository of that project. And what we do is actually open an issue or open a discussion. And we encourage the, the project uh, maintainers to join the, the tag runtime meeting uh, anytime in the future. And they're free to add that time or when they want to meet. We actually have fixed time, but they're free to add the date when they want to. Uh, present and, and, and they can add it to the agenda, so it's very, very wide open and, and they get the time to, to present. Uh, so, yeah, I think it varies between different community members on how they reach out to these different projects. Some community members might be more involved with uh, other working groups or Kubernetes uh, groups or, or other open source communities, uh, and they have their own means of um, uh, contacting the projects. But the idea is just do constantly be out there and outreaching to different technologies uh, related to the, the runtime and see if uh, they could, they're interested in presenting. Uh, it, it, the idea is not also to force them to present, but you know, to, to just open it up and, and, and see their, if they're interested. We don't get presentations from all of the projects that we reach out to, but we do sometimes numbers and, and try to, to get as, as much as possible. And I think the communities are very friendly. And overall, I think we, we have a pretty high success rate in terms of projects presented in the meetings. Yeah, uh, I just had a comment, not a question. So I remember Steve. So Stephen and Daniel are the new chairs of Tag Runtime. So can we at least get a shout out for them? <laughs> Uh, so Stephen's not on the stage, but I just want to call her. I think Stephen, you got involved in Tag Runtime from Coupon Chicago. I remember meeting you in the hallway and we were pitching you Tag Runtime and now you're here. Uh, do you want to talk about your journey and how you got involved as a chair and how your journey has been? I think that might be inspirational. She's putting you in the spot. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just put me on the spot, sure. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of volunteering and getting involved and kind of following through the, the ladder that Rajas mentioned. So 
Um, I would say first to, to talk to contributing or suggesting projects, you know, please post in the Slack as well, suggest we can add a, a template to the doc uh, if you want to reach out uh, to other projects. Um, but it really just started from, you know, starting with that project outreach, attending meetings, being involved. Um, that's the most important part is just, you know, showing up, um, uh, contributing in whatever way makes sense to you and then focus on your area of interest. Clearly there's a lot of different areas of interest here, which is great. Uh, you don't have to be an expert in all of them, right? But your, whatever you bring to the table is very important. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you don't have to write code or to be a contributor, so, any, so just look at the, or think about the, your, your strengths and, and how you can help, right? So everybody's different, uh, we're big on, Diversity of opinions, diversity of backgrounds, of, you know, the type of uh, career path that you follow. Uh, we're pretty open and we understand that everybody has a different background and can help in many different ways. I just have like a follow up question, you know, um, of course, great topic, great discussion. Um, you're mentioning projects. I mean, uh, are we talking about related projects? Are we talking about CNF, CNCF projects? Um, uh, w just wondering what is the definition of projects and of course the second part is like how do we go in, uh, like for example if I'm interested in cloud native AI working group um, uh, how do I find uh, you know the related projects uh, I mean are they available on like github or uh, yeah thanks thanks for the question so uh, if you're interested in cloud native AI working group first step would be to join the WG artificial intelligence Slack channel on uh, CNCF Slack. Uh, the other one is these projects are not necessarily part of CNCF landscape, but are relevant to cloud native and specifically relevant to tag runtime. That means they're either orchestrators or help uh, or projects with help in running workloads on cloud native infrastructure. Uh, and with that into consideration, they can intersect with any of the other working group areas. So if you talk about artificial intelligence, projects which are related to artificial intelligence, but are also relevant to cloud native. But now in artificial intelligence, we are tr also trying to look or op uh, get opinions from projects which are specific to artificial intelligence and not very much intersecting with cloud native as well because uh, one, of the, uh, one of the deliverables of the working group is to figure out what artificial intelligence for cloud native looks like. And we need perspective from the other side as well. Like, you know, what, what, what are the gaps in those projects which can be filled by uh, cloud native? So uh, a thumb rule can be if you're interested in any project that you would like to reach out to, or you think is a good fit for tag runtime to reach out to is to just reach out on the tag runtime Slack channel and just let us know that here, here, you know, this is a cool project that's out there and you may either want to reach out to it or you help, you want help from us and we are free to, you know, extend help in any way possible. So does that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, I, I had, uh, does anyone else have questions? Otherwise I can have one more. Last question. Last yeah. question. Okay. Uh, we need to Prop up. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just had one question like about the scope of the of the tag, right? Uh, so I, I did a I did an unconference at AI Hub yesterday uh, about just like batch schedulers for AI and what do we need better out of Kubernetes in general? Uh, and there was a maintainer from Q and there was a maintainer from Volcano that were there. And turns out that they don't really work well together in some aspects, uh, and no one's talking to each other. So is and I saw like in the batch landscape there was Q and there was Volcano. So is tag runtime like a avenue for these people to talk to each other or do they need to do it individually as projects? Uh, or like, uh, because I'm just wondering like, how can we get these projects to talk to? Otherwise you'll end up with a similar problem, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, tag runtime can be an avenue where we can be help build synergies in terms of like how we can, you know, find out ways where the projects can collaborate better. So coordinator was an example where we found out synergies between coordinator and the uh, Kubernetes six equivalent of it and how it can help out in uh, six scheduling as well and things like that. So yes, definitely, but if you want to add. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, tag runtime can be an avenue. Um, we, 
you know, they can come together. We can, uh, I think one av avenue is what Tag Around Time can help out is propose some sort of standard or propose to the projects to create a standard, standard so both projects can collaborate, collaborate with each other. Like, so not just like, okay, get you guys talk to each other and see what you work out, but maybe create some sort of like deliverable in terms of a standard that is common to both projects, right? And they can work together. So make make it, you know, add a, you know, do some work to, to come together, right? And another, another example what what we are doing in our working group. Like uh, we are trying to make we experience exactly the same across the whole landscape. So we are talking both to cryo, to container de maintainers, how to get one, one thing out. So it's not it's not about what we are not talking to together. We talk, but we are helping like to, to drive feature and to be consistent across the landscape. And just one final comment I think that a tag can help out with is awareness about other projects. So if projects are doing like the same thing and multiple projects do like a lot of workload schedulers, all that kind of thing. So just having the presentations, having them come to kind of a central place just for awareness or us promoting those project presentations just brings awareness and, and then more collaboration hopefully for those, those duplications. I mean, we can take also the example of the um, uh, operating system working group. We're sitting together at the same table, like, you know, working in different companies, uh, big companies, that you actually don't sit together at the table. So I think, yes, it's definitely create an avenue to, to have an open discussion and see if you could, uh, you know, find um, common goals together to um, work and contribute also upstream. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for joining us today.